TGIF everybody, NFP day. How's everyone doing today? Who's tired? Well, suck it up. See what we get out of this NFP. Good morning, Ingmar. How are you? All right, so I just want to rewind the clock back to Monday. I don't think anyone listening to us here on FACE uh, got caught uh, being long S&P. So Blake came in with his megaphone formation and the count AB equaling uh, CD twice. Hi, Brock, on Monday. And he asked me the question, hello, Arena, uh, would I short it up there? And it was this day right here. Right here. This is Monday, the 31st. And my response was, um, I'd rather buy VIX calls uh, because uh, that way, if I'm early a few days, I won't get run over. So if I shorted S&Ps that day, even at the high of the day, 3515, uh, we went to 3585. And I would have been run over by about 70 handles. Don't know if I would have been able to stay and stick. So I said, you know, I'd go with VIX calls from Monday. So here's Monday in the VIX. And then, you know, it was confirmed by Steve Volge yesterday. He said, I think the market could start to roll over today, which it did. So, uh, where was the VIX on the same day it was here? It had a nice little range and closed good. And people are going, oh, the market's still going up. So anyway, your worst fill would have been 24.90 if you bought the high of the day in the VIX, right? So I talked about a $30 strike or so if you were aggressive and trading up to 35 if anyone took it. You should have doubles, okay, at least doubles on a move like this in options. So what I would do is take half off, and you have a free trade. So anytime you have an option trade and the options double and you take off hope half, don't take hope off. But take half off, you have no risk anymore, okay? So to make a call, Hanyan, Euro USD before the NFP, I, I don't know. It's putting in a pretty negative week. Anyway, I just wanted to go over that. And then uh, I asked Steve yesterday, uh, where do you think VIX could go to for an upside target? And he was pointing in the mid-40s. That was before the sell-off and the a spike in volatility. So, uh Nice work by the team on S&Ps. Uh, should I throw in the full moon was out there too? Anyway, uh, hi, Monica. Uh, talking about the dollar, it, it is interesting. So we really didn't get any type of, you know, flight to safety in the dollar yesterday. Uh, in fact, the dollar kind of closed sloppy. Uh, I still think there's a chance of a short squeeze here. Um, I'll buy weakness. If uh, they take the dollar down, I would buy weakness. Uh, Euro on Tuesday, we had that reversal. Uh, we're down eight pips here. So I just drew some fibs. And, you know, we may not rally. This could just be a little, you know, we didn't even rally 38% off the break from Tuesday's highs to here. But I have some fibs drawn in case we get a number that the dollar doesn't like. I'd be a seller, you know, up here around 50% uh, to 61.8 up here. And remember I mentioned the off number in Euro that it had to close under, I believe it was 117.97. So these off numbers aren't bad because it, you know, traded seven pips underneath it and came back. So paying attention to weekly off numbers, even during the week, 
can give you an idea, it was actually a great place to cover some shorts at the off number. And then if you were bullish euro and you say it wasn't uh, going to stick there, you could have tr tried something counter trend. Um, oil uh, really didn't fall apart, but oil broke the day before the S&P. So you had the dollar. First, you had the dollar turning up from Tuesday. Then you had the oil cracking. And then you had stock indexes. Now, oil... Um, I'm I'm thinking up here between 42, 42, 50 could be a good short with stops over the highs. So I'm you know going to be patient. Right now I'd be playing Tom Petty's. The waiting is the hardest part because that's what I'm doing right now, and I'm I'm not going to play roulette and guess on a, a, what kind of reaction we'll get in NFP. Yeah, it, uh, dollar strength would take everything down. Okay, everything except the dollar. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Blake because I know he wants to trade this NFP and take some time for him to do the bias chart, which helps me, and I know if it helps you. And if what we're doing um, here in phase helps you, the way to say thank you is to become a subscriber and invest uh, nine, 10 pips a month on the best research and best team on the net. Okay. Any new members this week, please raise your hand. Anyone wanting to become a member? Okay, Arena, what's holding you back? You're here a lot. I know you trade. Anaya? Well, okay, but you're here for face. Why? If you only trade stocks. Anyway, there's an, you know, everyone has an excuse. I say if there's a will, there's a way. And if you're here in face, it's because you're you're getting value out of our work. Okay. All right. Well, then that's, I'd say our Euro and S&P comments are pretty good. William will be on at the top of the hour. Are you uh, a student of William's, Jay? Okay, Arena. You, you could be an asset in our chat room. Oh, yeah, things are still chaotic down there. Okay, so this will be at your fingertips. I think Friday is a great, um, okay, um, day to join because you have the whole weekend. And this is a long weekend. I'm not sure if we're going to be working on Monday. It's Labor Day. So I don't know if we're going to be laboring on Labor Day, but it gives you a, a whole weekend to learn how to navigate the site and get used to the format and setting up your your phone with the app or your tablet with the app so you're not locked to your... Uh, hi, Blake. So you're not locked um, to your uh, station, your workstation. How you doing, bro? Good. I have my microphone on the wrong setting. Um, oh, wait, hold on. Can you? Okay. Uh, I'll you keep sound... going. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah but it's but like you're in a tunnel. Yeah. yeah. You... Hold on. Can you hear me better? Yes. Uh, yeah, but low. Yeah. Normal. Speak a little bit more to see if it's going to auto adjust the volume. Test, 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 test. A little test. better. Yeah, a little better. Testing. Um, I. I, let me just make sure um, that should be good. I, I didn't have my, this mic is different because you, it actually has a power source that you have to physically turn on because it's not like your normal microphone. It's a, you know, professional mic, but you, you know, it has its own power source, which is different. I have something I forget all the time. So can you hear me? Okay, though? Yes. Yeah, a, a little more volume would help Blake, but you're, we could hear you. Uh, let me see here. Just maybe uh, a little more. To, test, turn it test, up. Test. Bro. 
sing a song and maybe we'll <laughs> maybe go on we'll... you're a singer <laughs> maybe all right well hope, like when i sing hopefully... everyone would leave huh? <laughs> no you you have a great voice but anyway yeah. hopefully that okay well hey you know what i've got to do as uh, sorry guys i'm gonna i'm going to take over and i'm gonna get started with this bias chart because go uh, ahead yeah we got non-farm payroll today obviously we want to get through the analysis and make sure that um that you guys all know where all these key levels are. So, um, you know, let's start off with, uh, first and foremost, let's start off with the Euro. Uh, you know, one of the things about the Euro that's developing here and, you know, intraday, this could be a flag, so, or a pennant. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the Euro as, you know, if we're, we're going to hold, let's, delete this really quick the the channel supports obviously key we all we all know that we've been following that like crazy um uh, let's see here Put that on there and you can see the 38 percent retracement is really you know holding and so that right now that's 118.70 so i'm going to write that down as resistance we're bullish for now um but as you guys know if we drop below 11790 that's channel support so i'm going to put a couple asterisks there on how important that support level is because if we break through that then you know my opinion is we're probably going to end up going back towards 117 and then quite frankly maybe even lower than that I, I, every bank that i've read is really focused on this 117 level so even if we break through 118 um you know how far we go from there is 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 you know going to be relatively important because if we if if we do break through 117 then you know most people feel that we can go all the way back down to 115 i don't you know obviously that's not stuff that we're dealing with today uh I, today i think what's more in play is you know the 118 level um and 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 you guys are going to ask me you know is a strong number going to give us as you know uh a, 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 you know stronger dollar or is it a weaker number that's going to give us stronger dollar? you know it and that's a, that in itself is a very really tough conversation because i could argue either so it's how the market's going to take it is you just got to kind of react to the reaction in my opinion because we could have a strong strong number and people might say you know what we're not going to get a um we're not going to get a uh uh a, a uh, you know, a, a Congress um, bill passed and we might get some risk off and then the dollar strengthens because of risk off um, and, you know, a strong number. We could actually get a weak number and the market could just interpret that as, oh my God, the economy is actually slowing, stocks have peaked um, and then the dollar may weaken initially and then turn around and strengthen as stocks go down. Uh, we could, you know, there's, there's so many different scenarios and you can argue pretty much every situation. That's why I'm not going to pin myself down to, you know, say, well, this is, you know, the way to look at it because I, I, I don't think that that's really appropriate today. Today is one of those, you got to see what the, how the market reacts to the data, and watch your levels. Um, that's going to be really key. So speaking of key, here's, here's the cable. The cable is threatening, you know, move back below 132. Uh, I know we're at 132.50 right now, which is holding, but man, a move below 132, or actually, you know, it's probably more like this right here. Well, you can see this resistance right here is at 132, right? This is the breakout point. But if you take it just a little bit lower to like, 131.75 that that's there's a trend line here for the ascending wedge this is all sorts of support but man if we break through 131.75 i know some of you are thinking 132 as well but those whoops 32 those are all very important we're bullish for now but man i i you know uh, you know, if, and I've felt this way all week that, that we, we're, we are at risk of counter trend moves here. So um, resistance, I mean, look at how heavy the cable is. I mean, we're, we're trading at lows right now. So I guess we just need to mark up uh, 133.20 because if we can get above that, then we're going to get a recovery. 
Aussie. The the Aussie is a little scary here because um, we had we have this false breakout brewing. We held rallies to the seventy three cent level. Seventy three ten was pre this you know channel resistance. So I'm going to write down seventy three ten. And right now I'm gonna keep this in range. And the reason why is because we have this false breakout. And now the 618 comes in at 7250. So below 7250, it should open up back to 7175. So 7175, 7250, um, Kiwi. Another pair at risk, we got a little bit of a bear flag, possible false breakout brewing resistance now is at here right here 6740 okay and um you know it's like i want to i want to put it back in range because of this failure but uh, it's holding up pretty well, much better than the Aussie currently. 38% retracement comes in at 66.72. All right, I'm going to I'm going to keep it in bull for bullish now, but whoops. But it's at risk of flipping. Dollar Canadian, um the dollar Canadian is trading pretty heavy. You know, we have this inverted head and shoulder pattern that's developing. Um, but we really need to break above, you know, obviously at this point in time, we got to break above 3170 and then um, uh, 132 is really key. So I'm going to write down those levels, 13170 and 132. Remember, we have both US and Canadian data today. We're bearish while, whoops, we're bearish while we're in this um, channel. Okay, but you can see the Canadian's actually holding where it needs to hold. It's just trading heavy. Uh, it was trading really bullish yesterday, you know, and then today it's like, you know, we've been leaking all day. So, um, you know, I'm sure people are probably a little nervous ahead of, uh, ahead of the, the data because you have both U.S. and Canadian data. So right here, which will be 130.80. That just triggered because I moved it, but um, 130.80 is going to be support there. Um, and then, you know, obviously, if we break through that, then you know we're gonna we're we're heading lower. Uh, this the dollar Mexican peso has been extremely heavy, and I you know we're at the 200-day moving average, so let's just keep that in mind. Okay, that's here at 2150. Uh, where I'm just moving my way down, so 2150 below that. We have this tr broken trend line that comes in and you know what? Horizontal supports at 2145. So I'm going to write down both of those. 2145, 2150, and we have to get back above 22 to shift us back into our range. So right now it's bearish and this would be but yeah, I mean, it is actually it's one twenty. It's twenty two ninety five, twenty one ninety five. Let me read ninety five. Okay, I think I'm putting too many zeros here. Eh, no, that's fine. That's fine. Um, dollar. Well, I'm moving my way down. Dollar Swiss. Okay, so the dollar Swiss really have no desire to be trading this right now. Support being 90 cents resistance, the 618 of this move comes in and it's capping rallies right now. That is at 91.50. We're still bearish while we're below. Um, you know, uh, I know you hear me say this every day, but we got to get above 92 and then 92.50 for it to switch. US dollar Norwegian Krona is holding up pretty well. Now, the, the, I, I think it's, you know, helping, it's, it's helped by 
the weaker euro and then also you have crude oil that's you know struggling so the us dollar norwegian krona re resistance is going to be at this 907 level now this is a big previous channel you can see it through there so you can see why it's capping but you got to keep an eye on this one because it's actually acting pretty well Looks like it might be a weekly reversal, Blake. It could be. You know, I think we're setting up for a lot of, you know, potential reversals on a weekly basis. But, you know, it doesn't mean that it's happened yet, <laughs> right? Um, but That's for sure. We, and Yeah, we could have, you know, we could have a situation where it's, you know, a big inverted head and shoulder pattern, you know? So uh, I think support here at 8, 881, or we can just like write that. 880. You know, could hold too. All right, let's go to dollar index. So dollar index, you can see just this channel's holding. Um, you know, we'd have to break above 93 right now in order for this channel to break to the upside. So while we're below it, it's still bearish support i would probably be looking at this support here again these could be like big inverted head and shoulder patterns developing so we could drop all the way da back down to 92. dollar yen um i'm i'm gonna say this again dollar yen 107 to 105.20, no desire to be trading this right now. Or 105.10 to 107, it's in a range. Now, let's talk about some stuff that's really important. Gold, where is my gold? There it is. Missing so your gold is in your vault. I <laughs> so there's there's gold and as you guys know this is super important support we hit it yesterday we're just skating ab above it and so that that's what uh 1920 is really 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 key and you know it's below 1920 where i you know say we're going to be out of this bullish trend and we're going to be moving back into a range for a while you know, which probably take us back to 1800 and we're, we'll be bouncing around. Um, resistance is at 1950. Uh, dollar Canadian just slipped to support here. Wow, dollar Canadian's trading heavy. You know, when it, whenever the dollar Canadian moves ahead of a Canadian jobs report, you know it's gonna be a strong number in this case. You know, I mean, that's just, look at, look at the Canadian. I mean, right? Like you, you know, there's going to be a strong, strong Canadian jobs report. It's already coming through, and they're buying. So, you know, that's thing about the Canadian. It it tends to move ahead of the data, and I think it, it, the data slips out quite a bit. So, let's go over to the S and P. Okay. Great A B equals C D count of. Uh, for this week, that was the chart of the week, Blake. Well, yeah. Well, let's see. Let's see if the dollar Canadian or uh, dollar Canadian. I was just talking about it. Let's see if the uh, S and P can hold this thirty-eight percent retracement because, as you can see, this is a big resistance, right? Yeah, that was previous support. It acted yeah. as resistance. That comes in at thirty-four eighty-five, basically. 34.85. Got a throw over and then back inside your megaphone and never looked back. Yeah. Well, we got to stay bullish until we're until 34. 3,400. Yeah. You know, we drop below 3,400, yeah. then things are going to change. So we got 34.26 and then 34. So 3,400 key support. 
underscore 25. Okay. All right, guys. Hey, I've got a roll. This is your bias chart. Um, I, I've got I've got to take off and join join my office for non-farm payroll. I want to say good luck to everybody. Um, be safe today. Be careful. Look for, you know, look for some, you know, confirmation. And uh, Steve Stelios, Dave, good morning. And I'm going to pass it over to you guys. Hey, Blake, uh, are we broadcasting Monday? No, it's Labor Day. It's a, it's a, okay. it's a four-day weekend, guys. It, um, enjoy right. the long weekend, everybody. And we'll be broadcasting again on Tuesday. God, so, I could watch so much more television this weekend. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Hey, All you right. Know, that's exciting. All right. See you guys. All right. Good luck, Blake. Bye-bye, Mitch. Thank you, Blake. Stelios how you doing? Hey, man, not bad. Are we all ready for uh, the big number? <laughs> yeah. Yep. It, it's it's going to be big for sure. <laughs> yeah, which way? <laughs> yeah. Hey, no, Steve, gonna, that, that was great intuition. You said yesterday when you were showing the S&P, you said, and it could start from today, quote, unquote, Steve Volge, the decline. Yes, yeah, sir. you know, the vast majority of the instruments were showing that, you know, things were really, really <clears throat> heavy. Now, yesterday's reversal was, you know, great, undoubtedly, especially, you know, the route in, in the NASDAQ. Uh, yeah. de definitely a lot of the day traders that are popping up like mushrooms, um, you know, never thought they're going to have a day like this <clears throat> yeah. because they're not experienced enough to know um, how these type of uh, markets uh, tend to throw up at some point, even if it's short term, they end up to do this type of moves. And, you know, we said it again and again that keep in mind, these type of markets can produce like a 7, 8%, 10% move lower within two to three trading days. And I think yesterday proves exact, exactly that point. Right, and now, I remember I was asking you for upside targets in VIX, and uh, you were saying in a few days we could be in the 40s, and I think we got up to 36. We got up to 36 so. uh, yesterday in the VIX, yeah. and look at this massive candle in the VXN yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, I which, don't think that's a one-day wonder. Yeah, which, which took the VXN above 44. So, yeah, I mean... I dated, I dated a vixen once. <laughs> <laughs> I knew Stel would like it, because I know he has, too. You, you married one a long time ago. A vixen, right? Let's move on. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so... All right. Uh, so, we've got NFPs in about a minute and a half. Um have a couple of things to say. Uh, maybe not, I uh, won't have time to say everything before the number, but anyway, um, let's start with data. We had Aussie retail sales in line, who cares? Uh, UK construction PMI missed a little bit. Again, who cares? The interesting thing was uh, Bank of England Saunders said that, uh, Adav said that um, uh, the Bank of England is probably going to need to do more easing and wouldn't be opposed to it wouldn't be opposed to negative rates of course and you know I'm, I'm scratching my head trying to find central bankers who would be opposed to negative rates i think probably germans would be but uh, that's about it and, germans um, more or less and yes germans and a couple more uh, uh, the us ones claim that they're against negative rates but i bet everything i have that it's a matter of time yeah, I agree, and it's uh, it's almost like they're the best dream to have negative rates and QE infinity. So uh, that's that's what's pushing the pound lower today, because otherwise there is no other um, news. So we had Barnier a couple of days ago, who's been saying that look, there's not much progress made on the Brexit negotiations. So that's also weighing a little bit, but the pound remains um, in limbo. And I think we're either going to shoot up a lot higher if things look like they're not going to be happening or we're going to dump. So sideways until then. Okay, 10 seconds to go. Let's have a look at the numbers. Let's see what we get. We get average hourly earnings as well, but who cares about that, right? Uh, it True. used to be an important number. A lot of numbers used so to be important. we're expecting 1.4K-ish. 
1.371. That's in line. Revision. I, I can't say U.S. manufacturing payrolls a lot lower. Canadian employment chains worse than expected. Canadian employment higher. What uh, I find quite peculiar here is the big drop in unemployment rate in the U.S. Uh, considering that the NFPs came practically in line. Well, guess what? Participation rate participation rose by, rate plummeted, by 0.3. Right? No, no, yeah. participation rate uh, uh, rose by 0.3. So that means, actually, hold on. No, that, that's, that's the other way. The that's the other way. That, well, that, that makes no that's sense. That's the opposite. Yeah, so yeah, that makes no I, sense. I really don't understand this number. I mean, uh, the U.S. non-farm payroll number in combination with a huge drop in unemployment, I, I don't understand. I, I mean, mathematically, I, I can't even figure out how these two can go hand in hand. Yeah. The well, only way it could happen is if participation rate dropped substantially, but you said that the opposite happened, so I, I have no idea. Well, maybe we're going to get a big revision. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and and yeah. speaking of revisions, last uh, month's revision was also minuscule. I mean, yeah. you know, it was within the margin of statistical error. I mean, 29... Um, in 1,734 yeah. is nothing. Yeah. No, I agree. So market the market would have liked something. One way or, yeah, one way or the other, the market is reacting lower, having to do with uh, indices. So the NASDAQ is, is pushing at the lows of the day. Uh, the S&P, I'm assuming. No, actually, the S&P is, uh, is not suffering um, as much. It's flat. Um, it's flat, yeah, really. Yeah, from the side of the dollar's reaction, I would say it's non-existent, actually. I mean, dollar pairs seem to be... The dollar seems to be marginally strengthening, but nothing to really uh, mention yeah. so far. Hey, hey Stel, uh, during the uh, sell-off in S&Ps, uh, I heard on CNBC that when the Fed... Um, Fed guys is talking about that they have something planned this month, additional QE or something. Are you aware of that? Uh, that someone did come out and talk about additional steps in September for the Fed. Uh, in September specifically, no. I mean, it's yeah, they actually hinting. said, yeah, they actually said something. They're going to do something in September, and it's because of inaction of Congress that they're going to do more. Okay, well, I missed that, but it kind of makes okay. sense. You know, if Congress don't agree, then the, the Fed has to do something, theoretically speaking. Yeah, so, I forgot but, who the Fed speaker was, but, you know, yeah. uh, coincidentally, it happened during a big sell-off. Oh, okay. Of course. It came out yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the main event yesterday after the webinar finished was uh, stocks getting uh, hit. And, um, you know, it, it was a very negative day. And I remember every time this happens, I remember Steve saying up with the escalator, down with the elevator. Uh, yeah, the yeah, question the is, usual. is this just buy the dip and, you know, we're back to all-time highs within a week or does this continue? Obviously, nobody knows, but I think the VIX going higher and staying at these levels, even before yesterday's sell of the VIX was at quite elevated levels, given that we yeah. were at all-time highs. So I think that's a giveaway. And I think uh, probabilities say that this leg should continue lower, but obviously you never know. You know the yeah, Fed but, but, but in this context and knowing that the Fed is doing practically everything with the little exception of not buying stocks, of course, they're not buying stocks directly, but yeah. in essence, all the inflation they're creating <clears throat> is, is created with that purpose exactly to in, to in essence enable many of the market participants to do that for them. Yeah. Um, so, but, but as you were saying, Stelio, I mean, think about it. We were warning that things like the VIX going in positive correlation with the indices, so on and so forth, is a very, very bad sign for like something like a week now, a little bit more. And think about it. Yesterday, in a single day, the uh, NASDAQ daily candle, um, in essence, engulfed the last six days. So the last six days of the up move were erased within literally like, what was it? Six hours. Yeah. That was it. I mean, Gone. I'm 
I mean, if you look at the the bigger picture, this is still just a tiny blip of in course, the in the course. rally. There's but no question about it. You, you're right, and our friend Foriscal is saying, you know, is volume high volume the tell? You know, that's a good point. You know, so you have to not only see price action, but related to price action, how it gets there. You know, all, all that um, related information. So I personally think X was a tell. Yeah, VIX. Yeah. Uh, not not only that, guys. The, I mean, there were three very strong indicators. One was some moment, momentum divergences. Two was the uh, breadth uh, of the market, which was abysmal. I mean, less and less stocks were actually pushing higher while the indices kept pushing higher. But, you know, they were backed up by less and less stocks that were doing the heavy lifting, uh, many of them at ridiculous valuations, for example, like Tesla. Um, uh, and in my opinion, there is a good chance that the, not the reason, of course, but the catalyst uh, for the wooden leg the mar market was standing on temporarily to break was Tesla going out in the market and in essence uh, drawing $5 billion. Because let's be honest, I mean, I, I don't know what your reasons are that you might want to beat Tesla, um, a Tesla bull at these valuations, but one of them cannot possibly be that Tesla is making money and Tesla is taking advantage of the valuation to draw actually $5 billion because they can't make $5 billion. It's, it's ridiculous, but Tesla makes more money by selling overvalued stock than it makes by selling cars. Um, yeah. So, yeah, which is ridiculous, but it, it is what it is, right? Uh, yeah. If Tesla actually made money, they wouldn't be needing to, to draw money from the markets like three, four times per year. And of course, you know, they try to do that uh, you know, when the market is extremely frothy because, you know, they can get uh, more bang for the buck. So I think that might have been the short-term catalyst because, you know, the real reasons, of course, you know, everybody can tell. Um, so the three reasons were momentum divergences that were pointing that something like that was about to happen. Second was the breadth of the market, which was abysmal. And the third one was the, uh, as we had said, the, the, the VIX turning in a positive correlation with indices and, you know, almost every time it has happened in the past, you know, it's, it's a signal that, you know, we're, we're coming to an end. Of course, you know, when you're in a bull trend, the end means that it's a short term uh, type of end, um, especially, you know, in an environment that every, everything is supported as heavily as, um, you know, we see it being supported. So, uh, you know, if we want to go to the technical side, of the thing and, and, you know, and speak about like, you know, potential levels under which the market would actually really break. I mean, we did get the first break uh, here from the steep ascending channel and we even broke through. Uh, and I actually remember saying yesterday in the webinar that I think we can bridge both these levels within the day. <laughs> we did a <laughs> lot more than that. <laughs> yeah. Um, now the question is, can we also break through this horizontal support area and this ascending channels trend line support because that is what can get the market really going in the nasdaq and equivalent in the s p is this level that we're currently testing we had this ascending channel we had a very very short term minor overthrow and yesterday we broke through the channel uh, intraday, but managed to recover somewhat to close above it. We broke below it earlier today, um, uh, but we've pulled back once again. So let's see, can we actually close the day below this? And, you know, more significantly, can we close the day below 3,400? If that's the case, I think there is more downside coming uh, in, in all stock indices. You know, under normal circumstances, Seeing such a market environment and the type of reversal candlesticks we got yesterday, if we had this conversation a few years ago, I would tell you that statistically speaking, the possibility of seeing continuation lower for at least a few days would be extremely high. 80%, right? Something yeah, right something there. in the vicinity. Yeah. That's exactly the number I would use, tell you. Something yeah. in the vicinity of 80% at least. Unfortunately... Yeah. Unfortunately, I cannot be that confident in this environment because, you know, almost nothing makes sense. Yeah. The, um, the, first, the first thing I wrote in the chat room this morning was, uh, you know, good morning. We had this big, big uh, sell-off yesterday. 
usually in the past months or say year or whatever, um, the reaction is to bounce after a down day like this. Uh, I think that's, I said, I think that's the most likely scenario. We bounce a little bit today. If we don't, then I think that it's, uh, it's quite bearish. Uh, we have yeah. to, you know, we have to close higher if we are to consider that, you know, okay, this was a dip, but uh, we're going to continue higher. So. And, and, and this is also a lesson to a lot of the amateurs that believe that they became overnight magicians. I remember at some point, you know, I, I, I actually enjoy watching these little videos that Portnoy uploads. Um, I, I think somebody one day is going to make like a video library of all that and teach it in, in trading classes like what kind of mentality can get you really wiped out um, eventually. I remember I watched one of those videos like a month ago where he was saying that he has actually made two and a half million in the market. And yesterday he, he made a video that said that he lost one million in a day. <laughs> so, so imagine how long this guy has been buying stocks like every day. And like a month ago, he, he was up like two and a half million and he lost like more than one third of that in a day. Now, you know, people can understand what's going to happen if this market continues like that for a week, right? I mean, people can be, you know, strong trends make people look, uh, you know, uh, like, you know, they know what they're doing when very frequently they don't know what they're doing. I, I, I vividly remember and still you, you remember it uh, even more than uh, I do, the 99-2000 bubble period. Oh, yeah. When literally everybody, everybody considered themselves... They uh, were in you know. invincible. They yeah, could do no yeah. wrong. And I remember I was, you know, was when I first started trading like an amateur, for, as an amateur, I wasn't a professional at the time. And, you know, I bought some bank, Greek bank stocks in 96. I sold in late 98. I hit my targets. Everything was fine. My friends were saying, oh, you're an idiot. You know, there's more to go and all that. And then obviously the crash came and they all, all again, except one lost money in the end. And, you know, I heard cases, and I'm not joking, people like selling their sheep to, um, to invest in the stock market. It was just crazy. So, yeah. you know, we have this market and this all, everybody conditioned to know that stocks only ever go up. They leverage, they, they add, they do all sorts of stuff. And then, um, and then the down leg comes and, you know, what do they do? They all reach for, for the exit at the same time. So. And especially in a market, and I'm not saying this is going to happen now, but it will inevitably happen. And when it does, it's going to be spectacular to watch, but a real big drama for many of those. In a market that has got people indoctrinated in a 12-year period that buying the dip and holding and, you know, uh, believing, not hoping, believing in, in the best case scenario pays off. Now, imagine these people when they start buying dips that never get bought. What happens there? You know, they, they all get margin called. Uh, many of them can't accept the loss. They then liquidate other assets. They put them back in stocks thinking they, that they can make back for the losses and then more. And they lose that as well. Then they go into debt. They do the same. And then they left, they're left with nothing. So it's, I, I've seen this cycle repeat itself multiple times. You frequently know one of the best indicators of a bubble is that you see amateurs make more money than professionals. That's all, that always happens, always happens in a bubble because amateurs don't have the knowledge to have any type of fear. They just buy everything they find when, it, when you're in a raging bull trend. They make tons of money and they like... Yeah, I made that much. I mean, and, you know, look at that. He play, you know, he thinks he's a professional. I watched him on TV and he says he's made like 15% return. <laughs> 15% return I make in a couple of months. And then yeah. they realize that that guy that makes 15% return in a year will be there even after a bear, uh, you know, a, um, um, a bear market while they'll be left with nothing. It's a bit like cryptos, you know, we, everybody was buying and making money up to 20,000, then it went down to three. So, you know, if you're, if you're good enough to be able to stop when you need to stop, well done. But a lot of people are, are not disciplined. So, so anyway, let's crude see how oil, this goes. unsurprisingly, uh, was making the move yesterday. We said that crude oil making the move lower yesterday was another indication. That's, that's what got me thinking that perhaps yesterday was the day. Now, Admittedly, 
so far we found support in the 200 DMA, but I have to tell you that, you know, this chart doesn't look good. Uh, doesn't look good at all. Uh, yesterday's losses were really um, contained uh, after a, a late day rally. So far today we see an inside day, but I think that this market can easily break from here. So um, I, I think trying to be long with this type of chart is a very, very dangerous proposition. So let me just say that. Now, there are two things and two things only that make me a little bit more skeptical about uh, seeing more downside. One is that gold didn't budge. So that's one. First of all, let me, let me be very specific here so I don't get misunderstood. I think that, the, that gold getting sold along with equities is a retarded reaction, a completely retarded reaction. So I'm not saying that I consider it a normal behavior for gold to be selling off with stocks, but irrespective of what I think and how I fundamentally think this should work and why it's wrong, doesn't change the fact that market participants usually in such routes liquidate um, gold and gold positions. And usually that's why you see in big sell-offs, you also see uh, gold selling off. And that hasn't happened yet. And we're still holding this uh, key um, trend line support uh, and these uh, like 1900, 1920 area. So that's one. Second is that, look at yesterday's daily candle in the dollar. Now, there are two interpretations here. Let me zoom in very much so you can see it. So we had one of the strongest sell-offs that we've seen in quite some time. Uh, the only reason I'm not saying in a very long time is because we, we had, you know, the severe, uh, you know, down days during COVID. Um, but look at the dollar. I mean, the dollar index left behind actually a candlestick that doesn't even look bullish at all. I mean, we created a pin bar after testing this descending channel strand line resistance. I, I'll I have to tell you that it looks more bearish than bullish. Um, so, you know, this can mean two things. First, the dollar isn't convinced yet that something is really happening. And many investors are not convinced yet that they should be, um, you know, going into cash. Because let's be honest, either you believe that the dollar should be a safe haven currency or not, that doesn't change the fact that in many cases when you want to liquidate your positions and when you want to go into cash, you know, inevitably you're going to find yourself even temporarily in dollars, right? That's why, that's one of the reasons why usually, you know, especially severe risk of reaction uh, gets a dollar bid. But the dollar didn't really produce anything really bullish. I mean, the day before, yes, we did have a strong dollar reaction, but yesterday, not at all. And we still haven't even broken through the first area of resistance because even if we break through that, 94 is going to be a huge level. Uh, but we haven't even, even broken through the first area of resistance. So, you know, seeing the dollar, seeing gold, you know, I want to see what we're going to do today. Um, so, you know, that's something I really wanted to, uh, you know, to stress out and mention here. Uh, so let me go through some of your questions. By the way, needless to say, stocks have gone bid. At least the S&P is positive on the day. Uh, NASDAQ is still negative on the day, but off its lows. Uh, and the dollar seemed to be more or less completely unfazed. I mean, it's a little bit stronger than where it opened the day. But, you know, following the NFPs, I have to say that the reaction is more or less considered non-existent. So the NFP does not seem to be producing any type of reaction so far. Let's see. Uh, let's see when some time passes. Uh, first of all, how market participants will digest the data, and more importantly, how they will consider reacting to yesterday's sell-off. I'm, I'm, I'm very interesting, interested to see that. VIX is negative so far uh, on the day. Anyhow. Um, 
let me go through some of your questions and see. And there will be a long weekend in the USA, so likely negative. Yes, that is a good point, Irina, actually, because people, you know, there is there is one thing to consider, and thank you for reminding me. Monday, uh, you know, uh, is a day off for the market, which means that market participants, if they want to stay long, they have to take into account that they will have a risk on the, on the table for another extra day than a regular weekend. So yes, uh, in many cases, you know, this in essence increases the uncertainty factor and especially following a sell-off day like yesterday, having three days of uncertainty and whatever, you know, news or headlines that can bring, I'm pretty sure that's, you know, that's going to, in essence, uh, you know, increase um, the jitters so yeah, might actually prove to be a uh, risk of, um, you know, as an effect. Uh, the rookie hitter fools the veteran pitcher in the first inning, but not the seventh, says Bill. And that's actually a very, very, very good quote, as Stelios said. Uh, questions about Ozzy Yen and Euros. Yeah, actually, you know something, we can start from them. Uh, Blake covered the majors, and we haven't seen those pairs in quite some time. so. Eurozy. Uh, first of all, Eurozy found support once again in this formation. Now, admittedly, given the fact that we had this big move lower, um, staying in a consolidation is not bullish, right? And the reason it's not bullish is because we had this huge move from like 198 all the way down to 160 in a very short period of time, considering especially that we're talking about FX. So an FX move almost 20% lower in like less than 60 trading days, it's a huge move, right? And following that move, we haven't even managed to put in a decent rebound. So basically, Eurozy finding support once again at support level, but overall, you know, not looking that bullish. Uh, you know, considering the fact that we know that Euros is strongly invertly correlated with risk assets, you know, that's something to consider, right? And, you know, uh, as long as Euros stays below 166, uh, you know, risk reward doesn't really favor being long. Now, breaking through 166 is going to be a major bullish development. There's no question about it. Until that happens, you know, the closer we get to 166, the better the risk reward for people that want to try to be short. Now, Euro Kiwi, given the latest, uh, you know, decoupling between the Aussie and the Kiwi, has actually produced quite a different uh, result, a different picture here. But what remains uh, a fact is that we've broken through this ascending channel, and that is a bearish development. So perhaps, I don't know, we can we can backtest this broken channel, trend line support as resistance, but as long as we stay below it, you know, uh, despite yesterday's uh, bullish reversal candlestick, you know, from a technical perspective, there is nothing really bullish to talk about with the exception of a single candlestick. A single candlestick very frequently is the beginning of something different, but definitely not enough to bet on it, right? So it's it's just the first building block of what can potentially prove to be a bigger structure. But just by putting down a single brick, you don't have a building, right? You just have a single brick, and that's something to take in mind. Uh, Patson says, very educational, Steve, thank you. You sound like my business economic professor, so mind opening. Thank you. Uh, although whenever I hear economic professor, because I had plenty of them, I'm, I'm, I'm getting really scared because unfortunately the vast majority of economic professors in universities are clueless because they've only been taught theoretical economics and many of them don't really even know how the economy functions. They just read the vast majority of the books that are Keynesian in nature and they think they know how economics work. But unfortunately, uh, what they do is they, perp they perpetuate uh, false beliefs that of a system that has really led uh, the global uh, financial system 
in the situation we are today, in economies being over indebted and us believing that we can solve problems that are more or less debt related by accumulating more debt, which is kind of scary. Uh, I, I hope, I really hope you had a different experience with your economic professor. Uh, because the first the thing I had to do when I finished uh, university is uh, try to unlearn many of the economics they taught me. Uh, Steve, uh, my econ professor uh, gave us a test and the question was, what is worse, ignorance or apathy? I, I know your answer. <laughs> I don't know and I don't care. <laughs> 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 I got an A. I All would right. give you an A plus. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that that was an amazing answer to be honest. All right. <laughs> um, speaking of which, we do we are now seeing some dollar strength coming in the market, and. I find it tough to believe that if this persists, that we're not going to see indices turning lower once again. So be careful because uh, if, if this move now in the dollar uh, sees some follow through, expect this little rebound we've seen from the lows of the day in indices not to last. So one of the two has to give. Either the dollar will have to get rejected from this trend line resistance it's currently testing turn lower in which case uh, in uh, you know indices can find some support or otherwise expect uh, indices to roll over and uh, produce continuation to what we saw yesterday so uh, you know the next couple of hours are going to be quite important um, they're going to squeeze dollar bears so hard that their eyeballs are going to be popping out. Eventually, it's going to happen, but I don't know if it's going to be long lived. If I if I thought of right becoming, there. if I thought of becoming a teacher, yeah, I actually have thought of becoming like part time teacher in the university. Uh, I went, but I'm afraid I would have to be more politically correct than I would want to be, and it's not easy to completely disrespect the curriculum. You know what I mean? So I'd rather be um, for scale. I'd rather be. Um, you know, okay with myself and consistent with my beliefs, then just have a title, you know what I mean? Uh, I'd really love to teach, but I'd, I'd rather do it in an environment that's going to be pro bono, so nobody can actually accuse me that they're paying me to teach their kids what is unfortunately not considered. So well, you're doing that right now. Yeah, in an extent. Yeah. Uh, and that's why, pretty, you know, pretty it's big one of the reasons I do it. Yeah, that's you true. A, you know? Okay, Prof. Uh, so we have about three minutes left. I agree with you, Rick. Uh, sorry, at the beginning, when I logged in in my Data Flash account, the Data Flash bar appears, but not anymore. Uh -oh. uh, um, I'm not sure what you mean, but I can help you out here. If you want to reopen Data Flash, you just have to go to Calendar and click on the button that says Open Data Flash. And that will force it to open, even if for some reason you can't find it or whatever. So there's a manual uh, way to opening it as well. Let's see what USDCAD is doing. I just got an alert. You know, we usually put some price levels. So, uh, yeah, needless to say, uh, quite a monstrous candle from a USDCAD yesterday. Uh, keep in mind, nothing changes until we break through this channel. So nice reaction higher, admittedly, you know, expected given what happened to the indices. We've uh, talked about this correlation before, but technically speaking, unless we break through this channel, there is no technical event to talk about. Okay. So, yeah, we can see follow through, but, you know, uh, betting on it yet, I think it's premature. Um, a question about USDINR. Yeah, actually, you know something? I should have mentioned that earlier because of this. USDINR a few days ago, and I, I've been monitoring it, but I keep forgetting to mention it on the webinar, has actually broken through this um, triangle. So that is quite a best development. You know, I was expecting that a breakout should see some follow through. In this case, we broke down to the downside. So 
as long as we stay and and we've now also broken through the 200 daily moving average so so as long as we stay below like 74 um yeah i think it makes sense to keep looking lower okay uh next area of support at 72 by the way 72 if you notice quite a significant support resistance area and you know price has memory so keep that in mind um Question about platinum, gold. Let's see what gold is doing. Probably breaking down. Let's see. Yeah, gold attempting to break down. So be careful with gold. If gold sees, shows some follow through from here, um, you know, and especially through 1900, that's going to be a very bearish event. And platinum, yeah, yeah, I heard you. I heard you. Uh, platinum has broken through this channel, bearish development, but 875 key support resistance area. So keep your eyes there. Okay, thank you everybody. Oh, one more thing. Just a teaser. Uh, we're going to have ready the uh, site for the next Traders Summit. Uh, the lineup is even better than the previous time. This time, Traders Summit will also include a highlight. We're going to have a panel. Um, oh, I can tell you that on the panel, we're going to have Peter Schiff, uh, Daniel uh, Lacal, uh, Anthony Pompliano, uh, and Mark Yusko. But we're also going to have uh, 14 people either on interviews, including names like Daniele Di Martino Booth, uh, Lynn, Al Lynn Alden, uh, Peter Buchwart, Jack Swager. He's going to talk about his new book. I'm assuming everybody knows uh, Jack Swagger and his books, Astraf Lady, um, Michael Guyed. Uh, so it's like cream of the crop. Um, so you're going to have the ability to register. The event is going to be a, th a three day event Friday the 25th, Saturday the 26th, Sunday the 27th. Um, and I think you should all be there. Of course, it's free. Um, so, you know, and keep I an come. eye on. Yeah, of course, Dale is going to be there. There's no question about oh, it. Okay, we can't thanks. have an event without you, can we? All right, man. Good. All right. Because I, I had nothing to do but watch TV on the weekend anyway. So be a nice yes. break. So uh, sorry, I can't give you a link yet. We, we're putting the final, uh, the final uh, little um, building blocks to the site. Um, because we were trying to make sure, you know, that we get everybody, so on and so forth. So uh, Monday, Monday, the site is going to be available. I'm just giving you a teaser. I told you some of the names. Uh, as I said, many of them are going to do presentations. Many of them are going to be interviewed. And we're going to have a panel discussion, one hour and 15 minutes. It's very likely that Abigail Doolittle, the Bloomberg presenter, is going to be the moderator for that panel. Um, so, you know, uh, stay tuned and Monday you will be able to register for that. Okay. All right. Wow. One event. Indeed. It's going yeah. to be great. All right. So, um, we have an event right here. William Feibel. I've never uh, interviewed William before. Uh, William, I'm assuming that you registered as William. So I'm going to make you a panelist and hope that's you. Gold is attempting to break. I'm going to continue a little bit until you told me okay. that uh, you tell me that you're okay with your guest. Huh? Okay. Thank you, Steve. So gold is attempting to break through this trend line. Of course, you know, don't forget that today's close is going to be both a daily and a weekly close. Hi, so, William. Is that you? Quite important. So keep a good eye on what happens and how we close today. I think it's going to be significant. Now, having to do with natural gas, somebody asked before, let's see what natural gas is doing. And natural gas actually has stabilized, although we have broken through this uh, channel. So we, we might see more downside. But I, I, I think that buying the dip eventually, as long as we stay above 205, is probably the way to go. William, uh, if you could, uh, uh, I'm asking you to unmute. And also, if that's not you, William, can you put something in chat so I could find you? Yeah, 
Uh, so you're not sure the William you promoted is actually our William, right? Yeah, I'm not sure. It, you know, they didn't include their last name, so I'm just. Okay, I guess we're going to find out. William, are you soon. here? Yes, uh, can somebody, you unmute? Somebody's asking for the DAO. Let's have a look at the DAO. Here it is. So DAO, you know, quite a significant reversal yesterday as well. Keep in mind, it's now backtesting this 28,100 support area. Uh, so let's see if we can actually bridge through that as well. If we do, then I would expect, now that this has already happened, at least something like this, if not lower. Okay. Uh, let me okay, see. asking for William going once, twice. If you could please just put something in the webinar chat Ozy box. Ozzy Yen, whoop. Ozzy Yen, we had a question about it. Let's have a look at it. So here is Ozzy Yen. Ozzy Yen broke through this uh, flat top triangle, back tested it earlier today. Now, needless to say, from a risk reward perspective, Buying against previous resistance acting as support makes sense. But if we break through 76 again, which, you know, the 200 DMA is gonna is almost there. We have this ascending trend line support, etc. Don't be on the long side, you know, if we bridge through like 75, 70, 76. Now, above that, from a risk reward perspective, I totally understand why somebody wants to try their luck. But, you know, don't be long if we bridge through that, because I think you can, you can really see this market, you know, tanking and you know moving lower fast. So you know, you you have your pivot area in essence, 75, 70 to 76 is the pivot area. Above it, okay, fine, you can be bullish. Below it, you know, danger zone. Um, ducks, yeah, absolutely. Let's have a look at the ducks. There it is. So, DAX got rejected once again from this ascending wedges trend line resistance, also horizontal support resistance area. But as you see, technically, it's not broken, right? I mean, it's clearly not broken technically. I mean, nothing has changed. Yes, an outside black candlestick is a nice reversal candlestick. But where do we find ourselves now? Exactly in the middle of this wedge. So, you know, it is what it is. I mean, from a technical perspective, I need to see a move below like 12,600. Below 12,600, yes, there is a valid argument to be made uh, that the uptrend has broken and we should see a much deeper corrective move. Let me see. Hey, Steve, uh, I'm, not, I'm unable to, uh, he's not responding to me. I it's okay. I we gave Twitter. We gave more time uh, to William. Uh, we answered more questions. Okay. So I'm assuming, Dale, that we can wish everybody a nice yeah. extended uh, weekend. And as I yes, said, we keep your do, eyes yeah. on. You don't want to miss this event. Well, great job again, Steve, with uh, you know being on top of VIX before the fact instead of after the fact. And uh, yesterday, uh, I've heard you say that you think Blake has uh, great trader intuition that sees turns before they happen. Well, yesterday I could quote you and you said it, w it could be today. And I hadn't heard you say that in a long time. So you have pretty good intuition yourself. My great yeah, that, trading that, that warrior was, brother. That was, that was more of data gathering with Blake oh. is different because I've seen him think that something is going to reverse when I look around and I really don't see what he's looking at. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why I, I, I call it an intuition in his case. Yeah. Well, no one understands why I'm saying what I'm saying. So what do you say about that? <laughs> I'm, sure you, I'm sure that's not the case. Uh, that's, that's the magic of Dale Pinkert. So anyway, Steve, have a good weekend. Uh, our, you do, and everybody else. Our community, have a great weekend. And do your work over the weekend so you're not, you know, executing on the fly. You're ready to execute uh, a decent week in the dollar. I think we have some things... Uh, 
uh, that have shifted a little bit for us to, you know, uh, have some bear market rallies in the dollar and some corrective action in the market. So um, uh, get ready. All right, because it's September. You know, we kids go back to school. I used to say we have to wait for the hedgies to get back from the Hamptons, but they're not leaving. They're staying there. They're not going back into the city. So um, looking forward to having a great September with all of you. So remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. And we'll see everyone on Tuesday. Thank you, everyone. Okay, you, Steve. Dave. Shut it down, bro. You're welcome, Laura, Monica, Richard. You're very welcome, guys. Adios.